Well, hi and welcome. This is, what do we call this one? Five college app and essay resources that counselors can use, teach, or share in 15 minutes or less. And just to go back to what I shared with you when I was telling you about this webinar is I'm reading this awesome book that's, it's right here. I'm going to show it to you so you'll know which one I'm talking about. It's called Doing Good Better. And if you are someone who wants to, uh, is interested in effective altruism, this larger question of how can I do better in the world, I strongly recommend this book. Um, it's called, it's about how effective altruism can help you help others do work that matters and make smarter choices about giving back. One of the things that blew my mind, according to, uh, to McCaskill, the author, is that he says, and this is from Jeffrey Sachs, an economist um, who also wrote a great book on ending poverty. He said, it's not that we have too few or too many sweatshops we actually have too few and here's why that's you have to get to chapter nine to get to that part but it kind of blew my mind the other day um, there's lots more in that book all right how do we apply that to you know effect what does effective altruism look like when it comes to the college essay and application process that's what i'm talking about these are resources that you're going to be able to employ really quickly i'm going to personally try not to go super duper quickly um, but I, I do like to go fast. So, um, whoa, that, that gave like infinite, um, let's see, is there another way to, we just uh, switched to this new platform. Let me see, I think I can do this. One, two, three, but I think I'll need to get rid of this. Wow, you know what? Let me just not share my screen. I think that's better because it doesn't give me the option to schedule one thing. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to um, walk you through a set of resources. Um, I'll probably have to paste links to them. Um, and, and then I'm gonna give you a whole big, actually, you know what? Let me do this. Let me give you the Google Doc. I know it's gonna, um, here it is, it's in the chat box. And you can follow along. Let me, you're gonna wait, go, wait, I can't get in and you're gonna request it, but hang on one second. Let me change the sharing options. Ba -doom, ba -doom. Thanks for your patience. Please hold. Okay, cool. Three, two, one. Okay, now you can actually get into the link. All right, this is in place of me sharing the doc because the screen sharing feature on our new format, which our platform just updated yesterday. And so um, anyway, that's why I'm not sharing my screen right now because they haven't figured out how to share just one screen. Okay, I see a bunch of you all hopping onto the doc. That's awesome. It's, it's view only, so you can't type on this doc, but it's gonna be kind of the outline for what we're gonna talk about. All right. First, how do we help students develop a college list in about 15 minutes? It can happen. Second, how do we help students start to find their essay topics in 15 minutes? It can happen. Third, how do we bring more insight, more so what into the essay? How do we diagnose an essay in terms of what's working, what's not working? And then a bunch of resources that I share with every student at the start of the process. Okay. So at this first one is, you know, how do you start developing a college list in 15 minutes? Some of you might already know about Coursera. If you don't, I highly recommend it. If you click below this step slash resource one, Coursera, what Coursera is, is basically, it's a lovely little tool put together by Ann Wager and some other folks that allows students to figure out what their deeper preferences are. So the way that it works is really simple. You basically go on the thing, create an account, I don't have an, by the way, I'm not getting paid for promoting Coursera. I just think it's the coolest tool. And students can go through this little questionnaire and go, do I want that? Do I not want that? You know, conservative campus. Yes, no, really want it or no way, right? Women's college, somewhat prefer, don't want it, don't really care. And they're like, you know, five different options. Students go through that, boom, 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 boom. And it took me about 11 minutes to do it. So even less than 15. Um, and I was able to basically figure out, here's this, and they give you this big, beautiful PDF that helps you see, here's what I want to do. Um, here we go. So somebody's asking me to reshare the doc. There you go. All right. Underneath that, and don't worry if you're not able to see the links right now. Don't worry. You're going to get it via email. Uh, once you do that, once you have a sense of what you're looking for, uh, or you know, a student has a sense, then I love sending students over to College Express spelled with an X, not two E's. Don't worry, you'll get the links. Um, College Express is a really great one for figuring out what are some different, um, uh, based on their preferences, what are some different schools that might have those things? So let's say, for example, a, school is a student's really interested in engineering. They can type in 
you know, schools for engineering and you can Google schools for engineering college express, and it'll give a great list of schools that they can start to research. What I encourage students to do is to write down those schools that are appearing based on their different criteria, and they'll start to see some overlap and they'll start to see some schools that they haven't even heard of. And once they've done that, they can start to load schools onto what I call their college list and essay tracker. And so your college list and essay tracker is basically just a big spreadsheet that has a bunch of ideas for schools. And I, I, I have students put a bunch of schools like, you know, 20 or 30 at the bottom. And then as they start to sort of realize, oh yeah, I'm definitely interested in the school, they move it up into these categories of reach, which are marked in red, yellow, which are maybe schools, and green, which are the likely schools. And I think it's a good idea to have eight or 10 schools. Once they've done that, then they've got their list. And then there's a second tab where they can put in their supplemental essays. It organizes it all beautifully and for free. And you'll get a link to that. So that's the first one. And I know it's, um, you know, basically that's, that's kind of the five minute version of that. But step one, what are students looking for? Check it out on Corsava. Step two, once they figured out what they're looking for, look it up on College Express. Uh, look up schools and research. There's a bunch of little rabbit holes that students can fall into. And this is to answer that question that some counselors have is like, how do I get students engaged and interested? I think the College Express is a really cool one because it gives them a lot of information really quickly and it allows them to cross-reference schools with one another. So you can click on a school like Tufts, for example, and see all of the lists that are connected to Tufts. And then, ooh, I'm interested in, you know, international relations. What are other schools that are great for international relations? Boom, list of schools. So it can be that kind of, I think, positive kind of rabbit hole. That's a weird phrase, a positive rabbit hole um, that students can kind of go down and find their research. And then here's a little tool for helping them organize things. All of this has been organized, by the way, in a little post that I've created, which I'll share at the end. Okay. When students are trying to figure out their topics, if you've you know, gone through or worked with my resources before, you know two of my favorites, the essence objects and the values exercise. For me, those are two exercises that take about 10 minutes and five minutes respectively, where students can begin to sort of, it kind of situates them in the place of the college essay and says, this isn't gonna be an intellectual exercise where we're trying to like do a thesis and like sort of walk through our reasons. It's actually gonna get them, you know, digging a little bit deeper into things. And then a third one that, that folks don't often use, but I find that actually these days when I'm like helping students and I'm going through their brainstorming work and their pre-work, the 21 details exercise is like a hidden gem. And by 21 details exercise, I mean, make a random list of 21 facts about yourself and see which ones, you know, and, and each one of those can kind of yield, I think, an interesting conversation. And that one only takes about 20 minutes to do. So that's outside the 15 minutes, That, but that's sort of like, or you could just do that one. I mean, I think if a student were to do just a random, spend 15 minutes coming up with as many random details about yourself as you could, Weirdly, that can generate not only personal statement topics, but uh, supplemental essay topics, short answer, uh, short question answers. Uh, there's so much in that one. Um, so those three, I think, are my favorite favorites. And I, and I might, apologies if you are really familiar with and you're like, Ethan's just saying the same things that he's always said. Um, actually, I'll give you one more. Here's an exercise that, um, that you probably haven't heard me talk about unless you watch like all my webinars. And it's called the, um, I call it the, in, well, the inside out exercise or um, the uh, islands of personality exercise. And the way it, it goes is, let me see if I have a piece of paper. Here's one. This is going to be confusing because it's got writing on it. But basically, actually, I'll just do it without a piece of paper. So basically, imagine a piece of paper. I have a student spend three to four minutes making a list of things that they know really well. Okay, so let's do this for a second. Um, what are some things you know really well? I know a lot about, you know, games, and I know a lot about uh, nonfiction self-help books, and I know a lot about um, productivity, and I know a lot about North Carolina basketball. So I could list all these things, right? Then you pick one that you think might make an interesting topic for an essay, like games, for example. So I put games at the top of my page and circle it. And then I take my handy dandy values exercise or what I'm gonna call my values menu. And I see how many different values I can connect my, to my, whatever my central thing is. So games, okay, what values could I connect that to? I could connect it to family because I have memories of playing games with my family. I could connect it to 
fun, just humor, laughing. That's important to me. I can connect it to learning. I've learned a lot through games and I love to teach through games. Fourth, I'm going to pick one more. Vulnerability. I'm not sure exactly how I'd make that connection, but I feel like I could make that connection. So I basically come up with some values and then I write one memory or like an image associated with each of those values. So for family, it might be like, you know, playing Trivial Pursuit with my family or playing charades growing up. And then for, I'll, I'll do the last one for vulnerability. There are certain games that I've played in certain like, you know, counseling scenarios, like Hot Seat was one that actually has put me in a vulnerable place. And, and through laughter, I was actually able to, I think, dig deeper into, into who I am. Um, okay, so there's an interesting opposite where like we were doing serious things, but laughter helped me to like go deeper. Um, I could write a paragraph on that. And so this essay would be then a montage, right? That's like, here are all these different parts of me that I want to show you. I want to show you my connection to family and my importance of vulnerability in my life, uh, learning, how I, I love learning. And each of those is connected by the thing I know really well. And the reason I love starting with uh, what is a thing that you know really well is I think that you're just going to have a lot to say about it and you're going to be able to make those connections to values more easily. So that's, a, that's one that I'm using lately that, 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 that I'm finding is pretty useful for helping a student come up with a montage or if not to come up with their essay topic to actually see how a montage is created. And it's that simple. Um, I had some students in Washington call this the jellyfish exercise where you put a circle right at the top and then you create one of those little mind map things with what are the little things underneath it. Sorry, I didn't have a piece of paper ready. All right. How do you bring more insight into an essay in about 15 minutes? Again, I'm going to refer to that values menu, which if you're, if you want, just Google values exercise, college essay guy. And you'll see um, this big list of values that I've already referenced. Now, when it comes to helping a student figure out what they want to say at the end of their essay, sometimes I think that's the most important part. And sometimes a, an otherwise kind of drab or meh, meh essay, uh, whether it's a narrative essay, if it's a about overcoming challenges or a montage essay, like the games essay that I just brainstormed. Um, it's, it's those so what moments that can really help, help something pop. So what, how do we use the values menu to do this? So again, you can Google values exercise, college essay guy, just have it in front of you. And let's say for example, that I'm writing a challenges essay and I've written about, uh, let's think of a challenge that I've been through. Um, a challenge that I faced in my life was, let's see, one of the one that I haven't processed much. I haven't really processed bullying. I, I was kind of bullied in sixth and seventh grade and, and haven't really talked actually about it ever in this context. So, okay, what were the impacts of that on my life? I felt like an outsider and I already kind of felt like an outsider because I moved around so much to many different schools. Um, and I felt sad and kind of, you know, afraid. And I think sometimes like uh, angry, if I'm honest. And I really needed connection and, you know, stability. And one of the ways that I got connection, if I'm honest, was like by becoming a bully myself. So when boys would make fun of other boys, like I would kind of jump on the bandwagon. I'm not proud of that. Um, what did I do about it? I had to find other ways to connect. So I tried to, you know, get into sports and I loved sports. So that worked. Um, I also, um, I, wow, okay, this is interesting. There are other ways that I, that I, I realized that I kind of adapted my behavior so that I was more well-liked so that I could be safe. Hmm, I haven't made that connection before. Okay, so that's an insight that just happened for me where the, the value of like connection just led me to an insight about an adaptation that I made based on a fear that I had. So my fear was being isolated and disconnected. And so what I had, the way I adapted was I, I, I wanted to be well-liked. Okay, you can kind of, if you've heard of the feelings and needs exercise, you can hear that I'm kind of walking myself through it right now. So what else did I do? I played sports. I got into theater later on, but that was like later. I'm thinking of like middle school and high school. I started to, uh, I, I put myself out there more. Like I would start conversations with people. Um, okay, and what did I learn? Okay, here's the values part. So what did I learn based on this? So what? Now, there are gonna be some things that I tell you that are gonna be kind of obvious. And then there are gonna be some things that might surprise you and might surprise me. And the tip that I give to students is like, if you can come up with a value that as you're sharing it with me is actually surprising to you, there's a greater chance that you're gonna surprise me. 
I haven't quite said it that way before, but I was presenting last night to at the National Charity League in El Segundo, and I said it that way, and I was like, oh, yeah. So I'm going to try and make an insight, a, a, a discovery here. So based on what I did, so let's say I, I started to play sports. What did I learn through that? I learned, this is one that I already have said before, so this might not become surprising to you, but I learned that there are ways of connecting with people that don't involve language, that it can be really profound, like connecting on the basketball court, for example, with guys in pickup games. I did this in Bogota, Colombia. Ah, that actually transcended culture. So we might have spoke a different language. I mean, I, I did sort of speak, I did speak Spanish somewhat. But there was a way that I was seen as other. Oh, this is interesting. I was seen as other kind of in, in Colombia. I was the white kid. But in the basketball court, we played together. There was a, a unifying thing that sports did for me that helped me feel more connected to these guys that I would, for example, just meet at the park. And so sports had a way of giving me community. Cool. I haven't, uh, I didn't thought about that before. Okay. So uh, that one's exciting to me. I mean, that, that's kind of a cliche sports equals community thing. So I'd have to find a more specific way of saying that. Let me see if I can come up with some more insights with you live. What are some other values? Let me, I'm going to just look at my values list for a second. So this is actually a go-to thing that I do. Sometimes students, I think, get sick of me going like, check out the values exercise. Um, let's take a look. So in terms of, whoops, values exercise, college essay guy. What did I learn? Okay, so as I'm bringing this up, so one of the ways that I connected with people was through sports. Another way that I connected was through theater. What did I learn through theater? Um, let me see, I'm gonna look through this values. I'm kind of trying to challenge myself, social change. Yeah, yeah, okay, got a new one. So one of the jobs that I got uh, after college, after graduate school actually, was working with a, a group of day laborers through Cornerstone Theater Company, theater for social change. Theater, which I'd done, you know, ooh, this is cool, that I'd done in, you know, starting in seventh and eighth grade to connect with, I think really to connect with others more, ended up later on, like I was from 12 to like, you know, 25, like 15 years later, little did I know that this would become a, a way, a tool, not just for connecting with others who were like me, but others who, who had, you know, who were different from me, um, you know, the day laborers and I were able to connect on this awesome, on these awesome projects together. So theater ended up being a real tool, not only for connection, but also for social change. Got another one. Okay. Um, you, you get the game, right? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use this values exercise as a way of, you know, challenging myself to come up with new ideas that I haven't really thought about before. And you can kind of see I get excited when I come up with a new one. And so you can play this game with students and you can play this game with them like on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but you can also do this in a workshop. And, you know, it's sort of it, depending on what, whether you're working on a personal statement or whether you're working on like an extracurricular essay, you can actually just print out and just hand out the values exercise and show them how this works and challenge them to come up with, I'll sometimes call these uncommon connections, right? But it's like using that values exercise and going, hey, can I come up with something that I hadn't really thought of before? That's the thing. And what'll happen at first is like, you'll come up with some that aren't great or the student might not quite get this, but then they'll come up with one. And it's like, okay, yeah, we're getting there. And if you can kind of help them calibrate to like what an insight looks like or feels like, then we're kind of onto something. This takes a little practice but I find that it's something that, you know, we get better at. Some counselors are listening to this and being like, yeah, Ethan, that's what I do all day. That's my job. I, my spidey sense is highly developed, but for folks who this, to whom this doesn't come naturally, I think this can be a cool way of uh, practicing and you can kind of up level your own spidey sense. Ideally, we're teaching students to do this for themselves. We're not the ones who are pointing out the connections. I think our job as counselors is more to go, here's the kind of thing that we're looking for and to challenge them to keep keep thinking so that they can come up with more uncommon ones, more surprising ones. And then when they come up with one that surprises us, point to it and go, ooh, 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 that's a great one. I really like that one. I think that affirmation for students can be sometimes be like, oh, I didn't think that was very surprising. But sometimes having someone else reflect that and reflect that a particular insight feels insightful or is meaningful can be super um, empowering for the student. Okay. So that's my tool for that. And, and, and this is something that you can do totally in 15 minutes. It, it can work in five minutes. But um, yeah, it's basically taking this values menu and just applying it to the end of the essay. You can do this again and again and again. Again, I, I think it's best to show students how to do this and kind of what we're going for. It's good to have them do this in pairs if you're in a workshop setting. 
Um, or you, but you can also do it in a large, you can do it in a large workshop and then kind of pair them up. Also works one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. How do we diagnose an essay and make sure the essay is like doing its job? Oh, there, a question came in. Uh, let me, you know what? Let me come to the questions at the end. I'll do the questions at the end. I'm so, I'm so tempted to, uh, jump in, but I'll, I'll feel free to type questions in the chat box and I'll come to them at the end. Okay. So how do we diagnose an essay? Um, I have two ways of answering this. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to give you the surprising one or the new one first. I think I'm going to give you the, the new one first, because I don't want to, I worry one of my fears is boring people if they know my resources and materials. So, okay. So how do I diagnose an essay? When I'm reading an essay, here's what's happening inside Ethan's brain. I go, okay, narrative or montage? In other words, is this an essay that is primarily about overcoming a challenge? You like the way I did that? Or is it more about not? <laughs> is it about anything else? Not about overcoming a challenge. Okay. If the essay is about overcoming a challenge, I'm looking for three things. You might have to write these down. You might not. Number one, is the challenge clear and compelling? Which is to say, do I know what the student's challenge was and do I care? <laughs> compelling. Number two, does the student give me some sense of what they did about it, like did to overcome the challenge? And number three, is there an interesting so what at the end? Or another way of saying that is, did the student answer the question, what did I learn? So let me simplify those. Challenges, clear and compelling. What I did about it, what I learned. Now, when I'm trying to sort of diagnose an essay, I'm kind of going in my head, is each section green, yellow, or red? Okay, green is like, hey, it's good to go. The, the challenge is clear and compelling, all systems go. And then I move into the what I did section. This part is oftentimes harder for students because sometimes they have more to say about the challenge and less to say about the what they did. So I go again, green, yellow, or red. If it's green, all systems go, I'm moving on to the, you know, the what I, what I learned. Is that insight? Did they say something there that kind of surprised me beyond the, you know, my experiences have made me who I am kind of, in, you know, ending. And if it's green, then this is a pretty good essay. And we can move on to what I call the great college essay test, which I'll talk about in just a second. Okay, so that's what that's kind of how I'm diagnosing. Now, when it comes to sort of, you know, how do I figure out how to address each of these? There are like a bunch of questions that I don't know that I'm going to get into right now. But, you know, how do you improve the um, what I did about the challenges? How do I improve the what I did about it? And how do I improve the what I learned? If we've got time at the end, I'll come back and talk about like how to improve each of those sections. But that kind of gets into stuff that I'm going to cover on my course. And so it might take just too long to actually really delve into those. But let's, okay, so that's narrative, challenges. If a student is not writing about challenges, they're writing what I call a montage, we really need two things. We need some stuff to write about, like some cool things, like, you know, I'm, family is important to me and my intellectual curiosity keeps me up at night. And, um, you know, I really love connecting with others. That's kind of a boring essay. But what is the common thread? That's the second thing we need. It's going to connect all those things. And in the case of the example that I brainstormed a little while ago, for me, it's games. So what I need is I need some stuff to write about. And then I need a thing that connects all the stuff. Now, let me give you a quick metaphor. We need some beads and we need a thread that's going to connect all those beads. Okay. That's what I think makes a great montage. And what am I saying here? Am I saying that every essay needs to have something that connects all the things. I, I kind of am because I feel like if we don't have a chronological, you know, sort of connection between the events in the story or the paragraphs, we need something that's thematic that kind of holds it all together. Now, can we sometimes, you know, do both? Yes, but that's advanced. We're not going to talk about that right now because we're doing, we're doing the 15 minute version. So when I'm trying to diagnose a montage essay, I'm not asking challenges, what I did, what I learned. I'm asking, is the thematic thread clear? Like, do I have a sense of what's connecting all the pieces? Sometimes it's really clear because it's in the first sentence. To me, sports are life. And I know sports are going to be the thing that connect everything, you know, something in every paragraph. Sometimes, though, the thematic thread kind of shifts paragraph by paragraph. And it's almost like those transitions kind of need to do what I call like some stitching. 
you know, the way that A connects to B, paragraph one to paragraph two, is a little bit different from the way that paragraph two connects to paragraph three. Okay. But is, can I follow the thematic thread? That's the first question I'm asking. Because if not, we need to work on that. The second thing I'm looking is like, am I actually finding the pieces compelling or interesting? Now, if not, it might be that I need to take that insight exercise and apply it to the ends of each of those paragraphs. But that's sort of like getting into more into the weeds than I want to get right now. So let me just recap. I'm going to take a sip of water and I'm going to recap sort of a diagnostic tool that you can keep in your head. I'm working on creating like a flow chart for this that's going to help folks. But here, here's the, the short version of it. In Ethan's brain, are we talking about a challenge or not? If we're talking about a challenge, what's the challenge? What did I do about it? What did I learn? Okay. And we can work on either, each of those. If I'm, we're not talking about a challenge, it's like, what are the different things? And are they interesting? And do I care about them? I.e. the beads. And is the thematic thread that connects them all, is that clear? Because it could be we either need some new beads or we need a new or different thread. Okay, let's assume that yes, we've got good thread and beads, we like them. Yes, we've got a clear challenges, what I did about it, what I learned. Now we're into the great college essay test, which is some of you have heard about. You could just Google great college essay test. And I'm looking for four things. I know there's a lot of information. I'm looking for core values. Do I get a sense of what you really care about? I've only said values nine times in this session. Two, is it vulnerable? Is it personal? And a vulnerable essay is going to be a little bit, it's going to be probably a little more vulnerable if it's talking about challenges. Vulnerability isn't, I think, as important with a montage essay, and it might look a little bit different. It might be more about, here's something that I'm really excited about, or I just want to geek out on. After that, it's insight, the thing we've already talked about. Do I get an interesting and surprising sense of so what? And then finally, craft. Do I get a sense that the student really drafted it over several drafts? And there's a little PDF if you Google great college essay test to like that you can apply with students in, in less than 15 minutes. So I kind of did two tools there. And I think the first one, once you've kind of got a sense, or once I've got, a, now that I've got a sense of kind of that flow chart in my mind, I can kind of diagnose where it needs work within like three minutes. You know, it, that's me reading the essay. That, it's about how long it takes me to read an essay. If I'm reading fast, it's, you know, a minute. But if I, if I, if I kind of go slow and maybe read it twice and think about it in about three minutes, I can kind of diagnose which part needs work. Okay. I really welcome, let me just pause. I welcome questions on that because um, I think it's clear. It's clear in my head, but I don't know if it's clear out there. So I welcome questions or feedback. Or if you feel like, Ethan, that was super clear. That's the clearest way you've ever said that. I'd love to hear that too. So, because part of it is I'm working on this new tool, sip of water. If you've got questions about that, please let me know. Okay, pause for breath. We're kind of at the midway point. That's good. Lynn says it's very clear. Thanks, Lynn. Okay, Sean says it's clear too. All right, no one else tell me. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so one, one of the questions that I've gotten is, you know, how do I, just give me the best stuff, Ethan. Like if, you know, if I was just going to send like some links or post them on my school counseling website, or if I was going to just share links with students, which are the best ones? Here they are. These are my, my favorite ones. Number one, <clears throat> I've got a podcast, if y'all don't know, and my favorite, uh, I don't want to say my favorite episode because I don't want to offend anybody. One of my favorite episodes is the one with Maria Fortado from Colleges That Change Lives. Maria has spent lots of years and is really funny and really good with words talking about colleges that change lives. And her episode is, I think, must listen for, you know, for parents. And if, you're, if you've got parents that are sort of thinking a lot about highly selectives, and I think this is a great one that can kind of unhook them just a little bit and get them thinking about the value of a liberal arts education. Hopefully. It's, it's one of my best. It's like sometimes I think of myself as like a pharmacist, and I'm like, here, try this. Here, try this podcast with Maria Fortado. Um, highly recommend. The second one, and these links are all on the Google Doc, which let me just paste again in case folks joined late. Here we go. Okay. Um, the second one is this how to create a great college list tool. or It's really a blog post. And it basically walks through those elements that I was talking about, Corsava, College Express, and the list, uh, the spreadsheet. And it's a pretty clear way, I think, of helping a student begin to develop their list. Corsava takes, like I said, about 10 minutes. 
and it only takes one minute to take the spreadsheet tracker and paste it. So it's going to take them 15 minutes to like set up their thing. And then of course, it's like however much research they're willing to do. But it, it like walks them through, why should you use Corsava? Why should you use College Express? Here's how to use them. And then I did a really like a four page PDF version that has a bunch of links on it. So you can print it out or you can like email it out and it's got links to like what schools are good for you know architecture or what schools are the top 10 slacker colleges or which ones are most like hogwarts all of which are listed in steven antonoff's book right if you know steve steve's book is the college express lists and so this is explained in the post but he basically spent years and years and years researching a bunch of schools and getting a bunch of input from counselors on you know to create these lists of schools so it's basically his he wrote a book called college finder he wrote another book called college match these are like, a, a, it's a book of lists. All of that is in College Express. If you didn't know, now you know, it's, that's probably, I would rank that as like my number one favorite resource, maybe in the college admissions world. Okay, third, I mentioned those resources for helping students brainstorm. They're all in my free guide to the personal statement. It's like a one hour or two hour or however much time students will spend walking through different types of essays. Here are the brainstorming exercises to do. Here's how to think about, you know, here's different examples and how they get to them. That's another one. It's on the spreadsheet or it's on the Google Doc. Some folks are like, hey, where do I find such and such thing on your website? There's a cool search function and it's on the homepage. And if you scroll down, I sound like I'm being snarky. I apologize. If you scroll down uh, and you just type in whatever you're looking for, like activities list or demonstrated interest, or I just wrote one on scholarship essays, type it in and it'll pop up on the website. If that's too much trouble, <laughs> just type in whatever you're looking for and add college essay guy. I know this sounds really like, hey, let me Google that for you. But I, that's how I find resources now is I'm like, where did I put that? And I just write the thing and then I just add college essay guy and something pops up. Again, I know that's probably super basic, but the, the search function does the same thing. Um, I've also got a YouTube channel that if you haven't seen it, I've got some some new videos on there, relatively new. I recorded them last year that kind of distill a lot of the best tips. So if you're trying to just get students thinking about their college essays, I've got one that's like, you know, 17 essay tips and another one on like, um, you know, do's and don'ts, and, you know, just a bunch. Um, I've got a, come, some coming up on that I'm going to be recording in the next few weeks on the why us essay and the activities list and these kind of things. But um, but um, but um, my oh, speaking of YS essay, I spent some time this year as I was working on my new book, um, updating and up leveling my resource on that. So you might have the old YS PDF, and then we've updated that. Um, and now I've got these like three different approaches to the YS essay, and that's also on the Google Doc. That's something that I think is, I was just talking to somebody yesterday. Um, and she was talking about you know being with a rep and the rep was saying, you know, our answers to the YS essay are, are so much, I care about that one so much more than the personal statement because that's connected to our yield. If you're curious what yield is, you know what yield is probably, but demonstrated interest, college essay guy. And I do a little quick explanation of that. Um, what else? Ooh, what's cooking in the kitchen? I've, I'm putting together finally what I'm calling like the college application hub, which is going to be basically all of what I consider to be the best resources. We've got over like, a hundred blog posts, but this is sort of like the top 12, I would say, or 15. It's maybe more than that. We've tried to distill to only the essential ones and it kind of like walks students through. So I'll email you when that's available. We're going to hopefully have that up within like a month or so, but it's, that's the, the, the seventh one that I would say, if you're going to like share stuff, that's a really good one to share. Okay. But, um, but, um, but, um, keep the questions coming. Elizabeth, I love your question. I'll get to it in just a few minutes. Let me tell you about two more things, how to partner. So we've got this program, maybe you know about it, maybe you don't, called CEG for Schools. Um, it's also for you know, CBOs. It's also for independent you know, counselors. It's figuring, it's how do we work together? So some folks, this is in response to some folks saying, hey, Ethan, cool, you've got all these resources, but I don't actually know how to incorporate them with my students. Like what would be a good way to do that? We put together these courses and what the, the, this partnership begins with you having a conversation with Alex. Maybe you've talked or emailed with Alex before, but Alex sits down with you for whatever it takes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes and says, okay, how much time have you got? You know, and it's like some schools or some counselors are like, okay, you know, I've got time in class to work with students. 
you know, or it could be if you're an independent, you go, okay, I've got time when I'm meeting with students one-on-one, -on -one, right? For other folks, they go, well, I'd like to give it to them as homework. And then other folks say, you know what, I'd like to do this in a workshop setting. So the partnership, basically, you kind of figure out based on what you're doing, we have this little packet that sort of shows you how to implement and use the courses with students to get them to first drafts a lot faster. So my job here, I think, or my goal here is to help you get to help students get to first drafts that are better. So when you read them, they're like, OK, we can work with this. And also to sort of equip them some language, the sort of narrative and montage thing that I'm talking about. It helps them to understand those. And, you know, what is it that makes a great story if it's a narrative? What is it that makes a great montage? A bunch of examples. So um, that's CEG for schools. I'll send a link out about that. It's exciting. It's where I'm trying to make it really affordable for folks and a way for folks to take this stuff and like give it to students so that on a yearly basis, we can set up a plan together so that we can work together to help students. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to make this process more efficient in a way, like faster, but also, you know, get students digging deeper um, in a more efficient way. So that's what that's about. And then if you don't know, I've got these courses coming up in about two and a half weeks. And it's an opportunity to, you basically watch a video. I mean, usually the videos are like 30 to 60 minutes. So you watch a half hour, an hour long video sometime during the week. There's usually a little homework assignment. And then on Tuesdays, we meet either in the morning or in the afternoon. And we jam like this, webinar jam, uh, for an hour and a half. And you ask questions and, oh, I'm trying to think about this. I'm trying to think about that. And we do that four times in the first course. So it's like six hours of live Q&A time. And then for the second course in April, I'm talking about the supplemental essays. I'm talking about the Why Us. I'm talking about the Stanford essays, the U Chicago essay, the Why Major. Uh, talking about the activities list, additional info. How do we then work on all those pieces to help students level up those? And that's also that's meeting in April, four sessions, an hour and a half each for the live Q and A. If you can't make the live sessions, you don't worry because they're all recorded and sent to you. There are pay what you can spots. We've got there's like a hundred dollar discount that we're going to extend until Tuesday. I'll email you all the details. So anyway, it's a chance for us to spend. If you take both of them, twelve hours together live. And then there's all the time that you you know get. So it's pretty comprehensive. It's the most comprehensive one that I can think of um, that's out there. So love to have folks join me. Um, and um, oh, there's a little early registration code that Devin has put there. Thanks, Dev. Okay. But um, but um, but let's see. I'm listening with my son now. My daughter got into Georgia Tech. Listening to you. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's no joke. Georgia Tech's gotten tougher to get into. Awesome. Hi, Todd. Valerie, uh, let's okay. There are a bunch of questions for me. So let me pause for a second because this allows folks to type in questions. If I talk at you and I'm answering questions and I don't give you a chance to type questions, so I'm just going to pause and I'm going to take a long sip of water so that folks can type questions, and then I'll we'll take Q and A for however long, however long we want, as long as there are Qs. I've got As. Devin, thank you for posting the questions. That would be super awesome. If you wouldn't mind doing that, that would make it so easy on me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <coughs> okay. Let's take Vina's. I'll just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that. Dev, thanks for posting the questions on the doc. I think he's still there. Okay. If he's not, I'll just go back to the questions. Okay. And let me just, for those of you, if you if somebody joined like in the last like eight minutes or something, here's the link to the Google Doc again with all the things. Okay. Vina, do you redirect a student where the answer to the bullying issue might be that they don't trust people? A college may not want to see that in the essay. Vina, if, if I feel like the student is still in that place of not trusting people, then maybe. But I would, you know, just, I would point them to that. So in my mind, I'm going like, okay, that's sort of like, the challenges and the effects. And that to me is sort of like resides in the first third of the essay. So my question to that student is like, did they do anything about it? So if this is my feelings and needs exercise, by the way, if the need is to trust, my question to that student is like, what did you do to be able to build trust with people? It's a really leading question, right? But because I'm assuming that they've done something and if they can't think of anything, then yeah, maybe it's not a great essay topic. Maybe they're still in that place of not trusting. 
one kind of fun homework assignment that I'll give is like, what could you do to begin to build trust back? And that, you know, is a question that I would give them in May or June rather than like October, you know, 18th, because they're probably not going to have time to begin trusting people again and then to learn some stuff about it if they've only got like, say, two weeks or, you know, a month to, to write the essay. So this would be something part of a longer process of like asking them questions and seeing if they can come up with some stuff around it. Um, and also, yeah, it just may be that that challenge is not a great challenge. And let's let's talk about montages. Let's talk about a bunch of different things about you that are really cool. And let's find a, a thread, a thematic thread to connect them all. Feel free to ask follow-ups on that, Fina. Let's see, other questions that came in. Zeynep loves College Express. Taisha, the video will be available to view later. Kim loves the 21 details. Awesome. Okay, let's see. Do I like having students brainstorm with me or by themselves? You know, Elizabeth, I, I like them to do some on their own um, because, because they can, because they don't necessarily need me. They're going to come up with some, maybe some cool stuff, but I, I guess what I want is I think to do some, I think it's really important to do some pre-work, maybe like an hour or more. And I, and I give them the exercises that I've mentioned to you and a couple others, because I feel like, I feel like they can, I, I used to only do it in person and I really liked that aha moment, but now I like them to come with a, a, a buffet of like stuff. And I like to just be like, Ooh, what's this? What's this? What's this? Tell me about that. It's, it, I just find that it's a little bit more efficient. Um, and it, it gets them kind of cooking earlier. Um, so yeah, that's my preference. Do I find students exaggerate on their essays? Do you tell them to tone it down? Yeah, Sean, what do you mean? Do you mean like, yes, <laughs> is the short answer. Um, not often. I had a student that did ask me, you know, should I lie here, basically? And I was like, no, you should not lie. I mean, I said that and then I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, other, and this is on his activities list. And he was like, you know, I know other students at my high school are like padding their resumes. And I feel like if I don't, then it's, you know, and I'm like, oh, first of all, I'm sorry that that's the culture of your school uh, and that we have a society that's forcing you or making you feel like you have to do that. It got real complex real quick. And then I took a deep breath and I was like, I kind of tried to walk him through what's leading him to want to exaggerate besides that. Um, and I tried to just kind of give him the options. And I go, well, if you do that and you lie and you get in, how will that feel? And he said, the ends justify the means. And I was like, oh, and then I just basically said, yeah, I would just feel really bad. It wouldn't be worth it to me. And I don't think you should do it. So I just basically said, here's my, I tried to be like Socratic about it uh, and kind of walk him to the answer. But I think, he, I don't know. I think he was just looking for my opinion and or looking for someone to maybe absolve him. And I did not absolve him. Um, what are the price for your courses? I'm Rapali that it's all at the links below and I'll send it to you in the email and there's a discount for signing up. So, and there's also pay what you can. So I don't want folks, I want folks to be able to sign up. Uh, and so there's always a pay what you can spot. You just request it on the link. Congrats, Valerie, on your daughter getting into Georgia Tech. That's so awesome. Todd, you're welcome. Brian, you're welcome. How do you help students who draw a complete blank when reflecting on their goals, interests, or values? I've, okay. So I think those are separate. Their goals, interests, and values. So sometimes, Brian, I found that students draw a blank on their goals, but, and that's okay. Uh, interests, they can tell me their interests. I, I'm trying to think if I've had a student who couldn't tell me about their interests. I mean, between the three exercises that I've shared, essence, objects, values, 21 details, I don't find, I found that maybe that like, there were like three students who couldn't do those. And for two of them, I just needed to like explain it to them differently. And they were like, oh, okay. I kind of get what we're looking for. Cause when they were like essence objects, Ooh, like one guy was like, that's super heavy. Like, what is my essential thing? And I was like, let's keep it lighter. We're just kind of free flowing. And he's like, oh, okay. It's casual. And that helped him. So I find those can be kind of an interesting way of getting at things like their goals and interests. I don't think that I've ever had a student yet, knock on wood, who wasn't able to look at that list of values and name some of the things that are important to them. 
you know, that top 10 list, I, I, I have yet to, I, sometimes students will get caught up on the essence objects and they're like, hmm, and I'll look at their sheet and it's only got one or two things and it's got like phone on there. And this is me milling around a workshop. But the values exercise, I say, here, are your, give them what are your top 10 values? They can jump right in. And once they, once we got that cooking, I'm like, okay, well, what, tell me what is, what is, you know, excellence look like? Or what is success? You may name that as one of your values. What does success look like to you? And then we can start to kind of tease out some other things. So um, that's not a very good answer, maybe, because I'm like, no, these things work. Just try them again. But I guess I would ask, what have you tried, Brian? And have you tried some of the things that I've suggested? And if not, maybe try those and see how that goes. And if it doesn't work for you, let me know, because I'd, I'd love to hear that. And I'd love to shoot me an email. I'd love to hear, here's the way I tried such and such exercise. And here's what I said. And here's what, what happened. I'd, I'd love to help you troubleshoot that. Um, but I think I don't have enough of a good answer because I haven't really run into that problem with the values exercise in particular. Heather, if a student's college list is very different from their parents' list, how do you tactfully bridge the situation? Oh, so this is tricky. Um, here's what I'll say, Heather, is that I don't tend to spend a ton of time with parents. I spend a lot of time with students. And so I can answer from that perspective. Um, I will talk to the student about their list and say, here's why I think these are awesome. And I'll just affirm them um, and say, I think this is a great list and I think you should go for it. And then sometimes I'll kind of guide them on how they can talk to their parents about it. But I'm usually not trying to like play coach or referee uh, between these two sides. I'm usually just going, I mean, if, if, if on the other hand, uh, I, I see the parents list is more like less reach heavy and they're going for like, you know, more range, I'll have that conversation with the students. So I'll say things like, so I noticed you have all the IVs on your list. Um, I'm a little concerned uh, just because it's going to be a lot of work for you, right? Things that you would say, right? And I try and talk them into, you know, potentially broadening the list and I, I share why I'm concerned. If it's the flip side, I don't try and oftentimes talk parents down. I might send them the Maria Furtado um, uh, podcast episode that I mentioned, but I'm usually sort of trying to advocate with the student, you know, and, and help them with that conversation. Um, so let's see. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. How do you help best help creative students? How do you best help creative students, but who are poor writers? Tell me more about what you mean by poor writer, Lisa. Um, so there are a couple of things that I think that you might mean. Let me guess, but say, feel free to type because I'd love to have more context. So a poor writer, do you mean that they like get caught, like they have cool ideas, but they get caught with the words? Or do you mean maybe like um, they just don't have interesting ideas? <laughs> um, so there's like the ideas muscles and then there's like the words muscles. Let me see if you typed in yet. You haven't yet. Okay. So I think that with the students who are having trouble Let's say that it's the first, that you mean that they've got cool ideas, but they're just having trouble putting them down. You know, I love the voice recorder thing. Take out your phone, hit voice memo and go, okay, um, let's see. You go, uh, what I'm thinking of is blah, 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 blah. So for example, 21 details, uh, and then just randomly like speak them into their phone and then, you know, write those down. That sometimes works. Um, sometimes it, it helps to just have the student talk and like, I'll just type down what they're saying or to have them do that with a friend if I can't do that or if I'm working with a large group of students. Um, if it's the ideas muscles, in other words, they, they just aren't coming up with a lot of cool ideas, I use that values insight exercise and I try and encourage them to come up with uncommon insights. Some, for some students, that's very difficult and we're not gonna, like getting blood out of a turnip, as they say. We're, we're not gonna, and it's, I'm not gonna say that we're not gonna get there. It's just gonna take longer and it's probably gonna be a little bit frustrating for the student and maybe for 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 me, um, but I'm I'm kind of encouraging those uncommon insights because I think that those <laughs> are can what make for a more interesting essay. And then the language doesn't actually have to be all of that awesome if the idea is super cool, right? So if if a student is making a connection that's like, whoa, I didn't expect you to say that. It oftentimes doesn't have to sound fancy. It just needs to like be a cool idea. And so I'm using that, bring in that values menu and give me something that surprises you because then it has a better chance of surprising me. Okay, let's see. Ba -dum, ba -dum, scrolling down, scrolling down. Okay. What ratio of counselor to student do you recommend for a personal statement workshop? That's a great question. 
Um, it depends on how deep you want to go with them, Sarah. So if you want to just do like a kickoff workshop, I mean, where you're just like presenting brainstorming exercises and here's how to get started on writing your first draft, which is like an hour or two hour workshop. You can go as long as three hours to really get in there with some good examples and make sure you have a break. Um, I think one to however many, 3000, I think the most I've ever worked with is like 500 or something. Um, but it could work with 3000 students at once. So, but if you're getting in there with like trying to help them, let's say it's a multi-day workshop and you're trying to like give them feedback on drafts. I think, I find that like a, if you can, let's say it's 20 students, if you could do like, let me say it this way, get as many folks as you can. Right. But I think if we're really going to get the students to like a final draft in three days, not final, but let's say a really solid, let's say they're going to go from zero. I have no idea what I'm right about to like a seven out of 10. And, Cause you can do that in three days. I think a one to five or one to like a one to five ratio is great. If it's, if it's a one to 10 ratio, a lot of times students are kind of waiting to get feedback. So you have to start pairing them up with one another. Fortunately, I created a whole course for this. <laughs> um, the, the third course, which I haven't talked about yet because we haven't put out the word yet, is on how to lead a life-changing workshop. I'm sorry, I don't mean to sell you on this, but I'm just thinking about like, I'm basically just saying the content from that course. But it's going to be in May. It's going to be live. And there's actually, I haven't shared this live yet either. There's going to be a, an in-person component. So for folks who are really interested, come and chill with me in LA and we can uh, jam on workshops. Um, and the purpose of that course is to help you kind of map out and figure out your own workshop. Again, pay what you can, splats, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But the short answer to it is like, I think one to five is an awesome ratio if you can do it. But it's possible to do it with fewer. Um, but if you're going to do it with fewer, pair the students up and teach them how to help each other and how to give each other feedback. Like the diagnostic tool that I mentioned, teach them the diagnostic tool. The great college essay test, teach them the great college essay test. And they're going to be awesome with each other if you spend a few minutes on helping them learn how to use that tool. Okay. Oh, Devin posted the questions. Thanks, Dev. Did you? No, he didn't. Okay. Don't worry. Are Stephen, good question, Marnie. Are Stephen Antonoff's college lists updated annually? If so, where can the latest ones be found? They are a great resource. So as far as I know, Marnie, the College Express lists are updated. But I talked to Steve the other day. I didn't ask him, but I want to ask him that question. I wish, I don't, because I don't know how often they're updated. I, I know that he's updated them somewhat recently, but I don't know exactly. So I'm going to ask him that. Devin, will you write that down? Will you just email me that so that I can ask Steven? Okay, Amr Pali. My son's blank, even after doing all your exercise and also reading your book. Oh no, blank? I don't believe it. Also, is the camp essays different from the college ones? Are camp essays different from college ones? Sometimes it depends on the prompt, right? Um, sometimes you'll ask, they'll ask for like, why do you think this program is going to be a great program for you? And that's similar to a why us essay. So he can look at that post. So it just depends. Um, in, in saying that he's blank, uh, after doing all those resources, those exercises, if he's done the 21 details exercise, uh, that, that's like, that's like counselor challenge to me. You've issued Amr Pali. I imagine there's probably some stuff in there that's worth mining and digging and like asking questions about. I don't know if you're having, you're helping him or someone else is helping him, but I would just encourage you to connect him with somebody who can ask him lots of questions and help him dig a little bit deeper based on the, if he's created all the brainstorming, done all the brainstorming work, there's going to be something in there somewhere and it might take a little while to find it, but um, it's there. There's something there. It just might take a little longer. Uh, Valerie, how do you know if something is a good or interesting topic for an essay? Okay. Flow chart. It's a good or interesting topic for a, a challenges based essay. If the challenge is something clear and compelling, especially compelling, like, do I go, wow, this is an interesting challenge. Yeah. I want to hear more about that. If it's uh, uh, for, in terms of the, the narrative or sorry, the montage, I think that it's a good and interesting topic. If the thread that's connecting everything is either weird or elastic. I'm mixing my metaphors, so stay with me. Weird in the sense that like, are you saying, are you are you talking about something that like, I haven't read an essay like that. Like I haven't read a, like, a scrapbook essay. When I first helped the student and she was working on like this, the scrapbook essay of her life, I was like, oh, that's a clever one. That's keeping me interested in. Uh, there's another student who's like writing with the, lap, the stickers on her laptop and how each of those connected to a different part of her. Those, that was a little weird. Now come to find out when I shared this with a counselor 
uh, colleague slash friend who was in Miami. She's like, oh, I've had three kids write laptop stickers essay. And I'm like, that's not so weird, apparently. It was weird to me. And then uh, the next one is elastic. So in other words, is it something that can connect to lots of different parts? Is it stretchy enough to connect to lots of different parts of the student? So an example of that, it doesn't have to be weird, would be like home. You know, what are the four or five ways that you connect with home? Um, you can Google these, home college essay guy, and you'll see that essay. Um, what's another one? Uh, the number 12. You can Google the number 12 college essay guy, and you'll see how the number 12 has played out in the student's life. And it's really elastic. It's played out in a lot of different ways. So that's how I know if a topic is really good. Can I stretch it and find out about a lot of different parts of you? Or is it something that's kind of interesting? And I'm kind of curious to see how you're going to connect it to different parts of you. Narrative is the challenge. Do I really care about it? There are like lots of ways to get me to care about it more. But sometimes, no matter what we say about it, I'm just not going to care about it too much. And so then it's the onus is on you to like go, OK, well, here's what I did about it. And then here's what I learned. And those that those parts need to be awesome. An example of this is like the with debate essay with debate college essay guy. The 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 what I did the setup, sorry, the challenge is like I was shy. And it's like, okay, and she does some things to help us see why it was a big deal. Okay. But the what she did about it in joining debate and coming out of her shell is starts to get a little bit more impressive. She wins an international competition. That's cool. And then the insight is like, wow. So it makes the whole story worthwhile. So how do I know if it's a great topic? I might not know just based on it being just an okay challenge. I might have to see how it turns out in terms of the what I did and what I learned part of it. And if those parts turn out awesome, then a mediocre, otherwise mediocre, potentially mediocre essay or challenge could be leveled up and suddenly, oh, that's actually interesting. Liza, what are your thoughts about students writing about struggles with anxiety and or depression? Yeah, so it's complicated. The first thing I ask is, or that I'm kind of curious about is like, are there other things that we could write about? Um, because with um, anxiety and depression, one, it's there's a stigma attached to it. And if schools are looking at two students and they're pretty comparable in these different ways, but one is dealing with some mental health issues, you know, this one might win the day, as it were, and be the one that gets <clears throat> accepted. And that's, I think, the way it is right now in our culture. But the other thing that may surprise you, or maybe not, is that that's become a pretty common essay topic, anxiety and depression, unfortunately. You know, this is the most, uh, maybe the most anxious time we're living in, and a lot of students are writing about it. And so it actually becomes more difficult to stand out using that topic. So again, anything else we can write about? If second question I ask is like, could we, if this is really important to you, could it go in the additional information section? For example, if it impacted grades, did you have some time outside of school? Was there something that was diagnosed? But again, if it's a narrative or challenge, you know, based essay, it's like, did you do some stuff about it? And did you learn some stuff about it? And, and the, the, the measure for me is like, is this your deepest story, the story you have to tell? And if you feel like it is, then let's go for it. Let's try it, at least for a couple drafts. If it doesn't work, we just move over to montage. I find a lot of the time, Liza, if I'm honest, though, I'm trying to kind of nudge students who are considering writing about that over to the montage side, if I'm really honest. Not because I don't want them to explore that part of themselves, but because I haven't found, I find that it's a lot tougher to write a, a, an amazing essay that deals with anxiety and depression. The other question is like, could that become a small part of a much larger story? That's probably a, a, a better, better advice is like, cause I don't want to, if the student really wants to write about it, I want to say, don't definitely don't write about that. It's like, well, okay, what else was going on? What led to that? And then give me the other sides of it so that that's just like one scene in the movie. And that's not like the whole movie. Okay. Last question. How do you fix essays? I don't fix essays, Brian, that try too hard to sound deep and end up sounding inauthentic or overdramatic. I guess I'd have to see an example, Brian, but oftentimes what I'm going for in the end there is I'm like, is that insight somewhat uncommon or is it expressed in a somewhat uncommon way? Um, set it up sounding inauthentic or overdramatic. I'd have to see what you mean by inauthentic or overdramatic. Um, okay. I'm going to leave it there. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to get to all the questions, but that's what the courses are for. I hope that some of you will join me in March and April. Again, pay what you can spots. I don't want money to be an issue. I'd rather just like chill and hang out with you. Um, and, um, and yeah, we'll wrap there. Thanks bunches. I hope these resources are useful. Much love. Talk soon.